we're beginning chapter six now, interest rate futures. And this, uh, it's a sort of a deceiving chapter. It's uh, written very tightly um, and very compactly, and there's a lot smuggled into each sentence. Uh, so that if you're reading the chapter and you're sort of frustrated by um, the conclusions, it reaches very quickly without giving you the steps through it. Well, that's, that's the concept of a book that forces you to learn, right? So there's a couple of uh, house cleaning things we got to get out of the way first. We got to look at some day count conventions and we got to look at some quote conventions so that we better understand interest rate futures. And for many of you, hopefully, this is a little more than a review from your fixed income course. But let's go. So we have our day count conventions and we have three different types of conventions for the way that we count days. And what we're doing when we count days, the day count, it sort of defines, let's just uh, make sure we know this, it defines the way interest accrues over time. So if we're looking for accrued interest, we have to worry about, well, what kind of day count convention is being used? Because when we buy a bond, which we'll talk about shortly, when we buy a bond, we'll pay the quoted price but we owe the other guy the, acute, the accrued interest up to the point that we buy it. Well, that accrued interest depends on how we count days. So it defines the way that interest accrues over time. Great. So <clears throat> for U.S. Treasury bonds, nice and simple. It's the actual number of days uh, uh, since the last coupon payment divided by the actual number of days in the payment period. For corporate and muni bonds, it's just shortened to every month has 30 days, the year has 360 days. Simple as that. For money market funds, it's the actual number of days since the last payment, but it's assumed a 360-day year. So let's, uh, let's uh, sort of throw an example on this so that we can see what it looks like. And here's our example timeline on the bottom. Uh, a coupon payment on March 1st, a coupon payment on September 1st, and uh, we're at July 3rd. And we're going to assume an 8% semi. Uh, so what would be the accrued interest if we purchase this bond on July 3rd? Let's not worry about price. What's the accrued interest uh, under each of these day count conventions? Well, under the actual actual, what we have to do is we count the actual number of days from March 1st to July 30th. So it's the 1st of March. So there are 30 days left in March. April has 30. May has 31. June has 30, and July, we're going just to July 3rd, has 3. Over the entire reference period, which is March 1st to September 1st. So again, we have the rest of March, April, May, June, July, August with 31, and one day for September. So that will give us 124 days since the last coupon payment over a reference period that is 184 days long. So that is the, uh, the actual, actual day count. So let's calculate the accrued interest. <clears throat> if it's an 8% semi, we know that every interest payment is four. So our fraction of time times four will give us 2.6957. And that is used for treasury bonds, which is the very first uh, um, thing we deal with in this chapter before we go on to uh, euro bonds, which is way over here on the money market. Well, let's look at how the corporate would do it. Since it's a 3360 and it's March 1st, there are only 29 days left in March. And then it's simple. April, May, June, and three days in July. Right? And for the whole period of time, uh, it's, uh, we can easily just say, look, it's six months. We can just six times 30 is 180, or to show that the, uh, the 3360 works well, we can start with March and say, well, there are 29 days left in March. April, May, June, July, August, and one day for September. You'll notice that you have all 30s, and the the ends, the bookends here, will add up to 30 as well, giving you 180. So when you get to the uh, corporate muni bonds, uh, you don't have to count the number of days in the reference period. If it's a semi, it's always 180. It'll always be 180. So that will give us 122 days over 180 days times our $4 times 
is 2.7111. <clears throat> For the actual actual, well, we're done counting, right? Because our actual number of days we saw over here was 124. And sorry for our actual, our actual, actual, our actual 360 for our money market. Our actual was 124. Our 360 we know it was 180. And then you, of course you multiply that by four and you see what you get. So there's our day count conventions. Let's look at some quote conventions. Here we will contrast the T bill, which is a money market fund. So its uh, accrued interest is calculated on the actual 360 convention versus a T-bond, which is a uh, government bond. Uh, so accrued interest is quoted on the actual, or counted on the actual actual convention. So let's stick with the T-bill here for a minute and let's see where that, uh, that takes us. We know it's a money market instrument, typically sold at a discount. So when we look at the price of a money market instrument, it's always uh, quoted at a discounted price. However, it may be quoted as a yield. And when it is quoted as a yield, it is a percentage of its face value or a percentage of par, not a percentage of the price you pay. So that means that the, the yield that it's quoting is a yield based on par, not the price you pay. Since they're sold at a discount, your yield is going to be higher than that. So if it's quoted on a yield, let's have a look at what uh, uh, how we would do that. Let's take a 91 day uh, um, at 8. So it's quoted at 8, which means 8% of par or $8 uh, uh, for a one year period. So what is the interest that we will receive? Well, it's 100 times 0 0.08. That's what that means. We receive 8% of par, but we're only holding it for 91 days out of the 360. Notice it's the actual 91 on the numerator and 360 in the denominator. This is our N for the number of days we're holding it. So the interest is $2.222 um, for that period of time. So now that we know the interest, we can figure out what the price of this, uh, of this treasury, uh, of this T-bill was, and it's quoted always at a discount. Since we're gonna make $2.22 and cents in interest, remember when we buy a money market security at a discount, it matures at par. As far as any revenue uh, 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 recognition is concerned, it's all interest. It's all interest. So we know that the two dollars and two 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 cents will be the interest component of what we get. So whatever we, if we take that off of par, it must be selling for ninety-seven point seven uh, nine. Sorry, nine seven seven eight. That's a nine. So that's our price that we pay. So now we have two prices. We can either pay the, the, uh, the quoted price, 97.9778, which implies that we'll earn interest of 2.0222, or equivalently, it could be quoted to us as eight, as a, as a, a yield on par of eight, which would give us the same price. So if we look at our true yield now on this, uh, it's, we are getting 2.0222, but we're only paying 97.9778. So that means our true yield is 2.064%. Not 2.022%, 2.064%, but we knew that. We knew that because the interest, uh, the quoted interest is as a percentage of par. We're not paying par, we're paying less, so obviously it'll be a higher, a higher rate. So. Is there a way to relate the 8 with the price of 97,998 so that if we knew one, we could get the other? Uh, is there a way to relate them together? Well, okay, P, which we'll take as our 8, is equal to, we've already seen that if we take 100 minus Y, and this over here is our Y, that's our price, 100 minus price, gives us the interest that we're going to receive, 2.0222. We're going to receive that over that holding period time, N. But we're going to get that as many times in 360 as, there, as, as N could fit in. So we take 360 divided by N. That's how many interest periods we can squeeze in 360 days times the amount of interest that we will receive. So if we know that the price is 97.9778, if we know that, and we know that it's a 91-day T-bill, 
what we can do is we can use this formula to figure out what the quoted price would be if it were quoted as a yield. We simply just take the interest that we're going to earn because, again, it's a discount, and multiply it by the number of times we can earn that interest in a 360-day period. There we go. Let's move over to the uh, to the T-bonds here and have a look at what we have on this side. Um, we're using the actual, actual uh, day count convention, so we're going to see down here for March 5th that we're going to be quoting, uh, be counting days. T-bonds are quoted in 30 seconds, uh, 1 over 32, 2 over 32, etc. So something that if you see a quote that's 90-05, that really means 90 and 5 over 32. In fact, um, we could almost say that they're quoted in 64ths because you could have 5.5 32s, which is, which is 11 64ths. So uh, while the standard convention is to say 32, uh, the quantum is not 1. In other words, it doesn't go from 5 to 6 to 7 to 8. It can go to 5 and a quarter, 5 and a half, 5 and 3 quarters, then 6 so that each quantum is a quarter of a point on the numerator. When I say quantum, I mean from one step to the next. It's not continuous, right? So this would be a, a quote of 90.15625, but it's quoted this way as opposed to the decimal, uh, as opposed to the decimal way, it's quoted in 30 seconds. Kind of got to get used to that. Up to now, we've seen uh, uh, futures prices quoted as uh, uh, pretty much pennies. Uh, when we looked at the soybean, corn, and uh, um, wheat contracts, we saw that they were quoted in eighths, one eighths, uh, three eighths, five eighths, etc. Anyways, just uh, just be aware of that. So the price we pay for a bond, the price that we see quoted in the market, that's called a clean price. That's the price of the bond. Whenever we buy the bond. If we buy it, let's say, look at my timeline down here, and let's say January 10th was a payment, July 10th was a payment, we buy it on March 5th, the quote is 95.16. That's what we pay for the bond. But we owe the seller interest from the last, for the amount of time that they held it. We owe interest. So when we buy the bond, we not only have to pay the price for the bond, we have to transfer some money to the other person to reflect the interest that they earn by holding it for that period of time, the accrued interest. When you add the two together, you get what's called a dirty price, which is the cash price. Now you're probably asking, why not just quote the cash price all the time? Because well, here's why. The cash price would change day to day to day. The cash price would change because the accrued interest amount would change. So the cash price would change, and then when there's an interest payment date, the cash price would drop. And then the cash price would change a little bit until it got to the next payment date, then it would drop. And it would imply more volatility in the bond than actually exists because you're not taking out the accrued interest. So that's why you quote the, the, uh, the clean price because if you're doing some analysis on bond pricing, you don't want this accrued interest showing up every day in your price. You want it outside. And you understand that this makes it easy to do analysis and comparison, and I know I'm going to pay the accrued interest. It's easier to figure it out after than it is to stick it in the price. I've already mentioned that earlier in the course, or maybe I mentioned it in the fixed income course. I don't know, but there it is. You should know that. So let's figure out what our accrued interest is uh, for March 5th. We're using an actual, actual convention here, so we have to count days from January 10th to March 5th. We have 21 days left in January. We're going to assume 28 in February. If it's a leap year, you'd actually have to count 29. Uh, and then we're going to put in five days for March over the number of days in our reference period. There's January, February, March, April, May, June, and then 10 for July. And adding across, we will get 54 days since the last payment over 181 days in the entire reference period times, uh, what are we looking at here? Uh, we are told that it's uh, an 11%. We're pricing out an 11, this uh, bond that we're quoting here. I didn't write it down, but I'll tell you now. We're told is 11%. It's an 11% bond, which means if it's a semi, we have 550. So we'll owe $1.64 in accrued interest. So if we're looking for our cash price, not our quoted price, our cash price is our dirty price. Our cash price in this case will be uh, the price, the quoted price of the bond, 95.16.
1632 is 0.5, so it's 95.50 plus the buck 64 that we owe per hundred dollars of face value. And the quoted price of the bond is 97.14 per hundred dollars of face value.